church. Good morning. Good morning. We got any visitors here for the first time today? Behind <laughs> some more Alex. It's just a reminder to please turn off your cell phones. Um, we have the announcements that are passed out every morning. Sandy and uh, Larry do a great job doing that. So make sure you read those announcements. Um, we don't pass the hat at Hillway Church. we got birdhouses in the back. So whatever the Lord puts on your heart to donate, please donate. Um, we've got the bread ministry out here today. Uh, make sure you pick up some, some, uh, some bread. All the extra stuff out there today, too. Uh, drop a couple bucks in those red cans back there. Keep those diesels running. Um, with the bread ministry, we also have a couple of packages of fish sticks that we got in the, uh, the, the freezer here. So if you're interested, go see that. There will not be any round pen for the next couple. Christmas is on a Sunday this year, so we're going to go ahead and get a count. Come see me after church if you're wanting to celebrate Christmas with us here at the church. We'll get uh, some fixings for you guys and make sure that uh, you know, you're taken care of. If you don't have any uh, family nearby, we can... We can uh, Definitely be a family together on that Sunday for you. You raise your hand. They might come. Yeah, raise your hand and then come see me afterwards. I'll be here. So kind of getting a rough count of who would like to join us. Awesome. That's great. <laughs> All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21, 22. Count Rogers. Let's, let's say about 30. Let's, let's, let's say about 30. All right? He packs a hot dog. <laughs> All right, restrooms. We've got restrooms out the door here. And then, uh, oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Enjoy service. Thank you, Audrey. Right, for Christmas dinner, we need relishes, salads, desserts. That's for next week. Dinner on the ground is next Sunday, the 18th. Okay. We're going to have roast pork loin, mashed potatoes, corn, and gravy. Ooh. All right. We need salads, relishes, and desserts. <clears throat> right? Only. Oh. Everything else is already prepped. By Deb. Thank you, Deb. Let's pray. Everybody ready? Are you sure? Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you... Just lavish upon us, Father. We just thank you for the blessings, Father. We thank you for each and every one that comes here, Father, and is here and part of our church family. Lord, we just ask that you'd um, bless the word this morning, bless the worship, the praise, the singing, Father, bless the offerings. And, uh, Father, we, those that are sick, struggling, in bondage, we just pray for healing, Father, and deliverance. And, Lord, just help us to be a witness to the community around us others might come to know Jesus as their Savior, Father. We just um, we just thank you, Lord, for everything. Watch out for us, protect us, Father. And God bless America, Father. We just ask that you keep us free. We ask it in Jesus' name. Church says. Amen. Cowboy Church says. Yeehaw! And Lord, do, 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 Lord. Do, Lord. Do, Lord. Do that. And also back there, there is a list for church membership, if you think you might want to be a member, put your name on the list back there, and well, the next two or three thousand to sign up on the other way another meeting. Baptisms. Anybody wants to get baptized, put your name on the list back there on the baptism list. Bread ministry. Yeah, she, did. Bread. she did. Put some yeah. dishes on that bread. Yeah, we are. Okay, do orders. And that's what these are. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
This is a um, Chris Tomlin version of Joy to the World. So if you know the words of Joy to the World, go ahead and sing. You don't sing anyway.
This should be exciting today. I uh, woke up this morning and and uh, I said, Lord, what are we going to talk about today? And the only thing that came to my mind was worms. <laughs> I said, worms? Worms. Worms? Worms. Acts 12, 20. You know, Herod was... Uh, they, he called himself king of the Jews, but he wasn't a Jew, and he was king there in Jerusalem during Caesar's time or somebody's time. Anyway, he thought he was pretty much a hot shot. So this this is about a little bit about him, what was kind of going on in his life and how he acted towards people and stuff. And so an actual <clears throat> picture of Herod. And Herod was highly displeased with them at Tyre and Sidon. Tyre and Sidon were pagan cities up north of Jerusalem there a little ways, but he had jurisdiction over them, sort of. And the um, uh, the leaders up there came to him. They, they Tyre and Sidon they kind of got together, and they kind of had an end into the king's bunch to a guy that worked there for Herod. Um, but they, they wanted to get along with him because they made a made pretty good living off of, off of Israel. And, uh, and it said that one day they all came together and Herod called him in and, and said that uh, he was arrayed, and verse 21 says, he was arrayed in royal apparel and he sat upon his throne and he made an oration. He spoke to him. Orate. It's only three syllables, Fred. Okay. He spoke to him. He spoke to him. He... he in his own mind devised a magnificent speech. And he spoke to him. And the people gave a shout saying, It's the voice of God, not of a man. Herod said, Yeah, that's me. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms. And he gave up the ghost. Boy, way to go. Now I've used worms in a lot of ways in my life. Caught fish. Um, I used to go out in the yard and uh, I, I took an extension cord and separated the wires and screwed a nail to each end of it. And uh, in, the, in the springtime after a rain and go out and stick one end of the nail in the ground in one place and the other end of a nail in the ground oh, maybe 20 yards away and go plug it in. And you can get a bucket full of night crawlers and nothing flat. Them suckers would just fly up out of the ground. <laughs> night crawlers. We had bunches of them. And we go put out trot lines and stuff. But we, that's, that's one of my worm stories. Another one is that the kind of worms that Herod had are the kind of worms that you can actually use for healing in certain instances. I've, I've used... Now this is just... You don't want to be eaten talking about this. You know what gangrene is? Gangrene's when your flesh is dead, it's rotten, you got infection in it. Right? Well, you can use the lar fly larva, more commonly called maggots, to actually heal gangrene. And um, I've had a couple dogs in the past that got chewed up, infected, whatever, and, and I had actually used that method for healing them. And, and those fly larvae, <laughs> for the, the fly larvae, they, they'll feast on the dead flesh. And I was thinking about that when I was thinking about this. He was eating the worms. And the way it's written, it sounds like he was just eating, eating live standing there, you know. Yeah. And I'm thinking, boy, his flesh is really dead. And then God said, so is yours. I said, oh, is that the lesson there? Yeah, we're all rotten. But uh, Herod was eating the worms, and he gave up the ghost. And then... I got a, I got a new body on order, and you know what? 
I'm, we're going to get them soon. I mean, it is soon. So I was doing doing some research on worms and stuff like that, and one of the words that kept coming up was wormwood. And uh, wormwood is like bitterness or something like that. And I, and I remember an interesting thing I heard a long time ago that, that uh, you know, over there in Ukraine, the... Uh, the uh, atomic atomic um, reactor in that when Russia had it that melted down and ruined ruined the neighborhood. Chernobyl. Chernobyl means wormwood. That's exactly what it means. Chernobyl. Uh, well, that's interesting. That's as far as I went with that. And then um, <laughs> um, I got I got to to reading and and. Uh, how many of you got in your one-year Bible this morning and read and heard the... Okay, so so most of you haven't. Well, that makes makes this worthwhile. Amos chapter 4. This was in your daily reading this morning. And boy, it is aimed at Israel in the day. And is it ever aimed at the United States today? Listen to me, you fat cows. Uh, who oppress the poor and crush the needy and who are always calling to be served. The sovereign Lord has sworn by his holiness the time will come when you will be led away with hooks in your noses. Have y'all got, got your um, digital coin cards yet? Y'all set up for that so that, you know, they're, they're, so that they can approve your purchase and make sure you're not buying too much of something and What's going on in the world all around us? They're getting ready to put that in. You not ready for that? Hmm. The sovereign Lord sworn by His holiness, the time will come when you'll be led away with hooks in your noses. Never last one of you will be dragged away like a fish on a hook. You'll be led through the ruins of the wall. You will be thrown from your fortress, says the Lord. And He just says, Go ahead. And offer your sacrifices to the idols. Keep on disobeying. Offer sacrifices each morning and bring your tithes in every three days. Present your bread made with yeast as an offer. In other words, keep living the high life and ignoring the things of God. And then, then give your extra offerings so that you can brag about it somewhere like Sapphira and Ananias, which the worms got pretty quick. Verse 6 says, I brought hunger to every city and famine to every town, but still you would not return to me, says the Lord. I wonder if that's going on in this country. I kept the rain from falling when your crops needed it the most, and I just heard yesterday that Lake Mead's going to drop by another 30 feet this year, which probably means it quit making electricity, which probably mean something else. I sent rain on one town, but withheld it from another. What's that been going on here in this country? All over. Out where rain's needed and floods where it wasn't. Rain fell on one field while another field withered away. People staggered from town to town looking for water, but there was never enough. But you would still not return to me, says the Lord. I struck your farms and your vineyards with blight and mildew famine. Have you been hearing that in the news lately? You heard about that? That the stage is set for a famine? You know, they, they, they've done shut off and made so expensive that you can't afford to buy it. fertilizer. Nitrogen fertilizer is what makes the hay grow. And the corn and the beans and the asparagus and the lettuce and I mean, some of them carrots over there had a lot of nitrogen, you can see. And carrots over there like tree stumps. You see them? But they're, they're shut, shutting down fertilizer. Fer, fertilizer's made from natural gas. I wonder what the first thing was that happened when we got a new administration. Let's start attacking and shutting down our fuel systems. You know, every week China puts a new coal-powered electric plant online. 
they build a new electric generating plant with coal every week. And we've shut ours down bulldozed them. We've got lots of coal. I struck your farms and your vineyards with blight and mildew. Locusts devoured all your fig and olive trees. But still you would not return to me, says the Lord. I sent plagues on you like the plagues I sent on Egypt long ago. Only I'll call yours COVID. Well, I put that in there. <laughs> I killed your young men in war. Led all your horses away. The stench of death filled the air. But still you would not return to me, says the Lord. I destroyed some of your cities, just like I destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Those of you who survived were like charred sticks pulled from a fire. You got your coattails burnt, but still you would not return to me, says the Lord. Therefore, I'll bring upon you all the disasters I've announced. Prepare to meet your God in judgment, you people of the United States of America, maybe. It's like he was telling Israel about that. For the Lord is the one who shaped the mountains and stirs up the wind and reveals his thoughts to mankind. He turns the light of dawn into darkness and he treads on the heights of the earth. The Lord God of heaven's armies is his name. Lord God Almighty. How do you get along without electricity? Be cold, wouldn't it? Everything in the freezer, you'd have to cook it and eat it all in one day. <laughs> electricity. Well, let's see. No electricity. Well, that would mean no water. Unless you went down to the river and got a bucket full. Done that. Well, I got a propane refrigerator. But there's no propane. Because there's no diesel fuel for the trucks to bring in. You heard that in the news lately? I wonder if Amos wrote this to us. We just haven't paid that much attention. Could it be? Listen, you people of Israel. Listen to this funeral song I'm singing. Amos chapter 5. Israel's fallen never to rise again. She lies abandoned on the ground with no one to help her. The Lord says, When a city sends a thousand men to battle, only a hundred will return. And when a town sends a hundred, only ten will come back. Pretty high casualties. You know, it's already more soldiers died in Ukraine, World War One, World War Two, Korean War, Vietnam War, put together. Already been that many soldiers killed in the Ukraine. Both sides. You know, they just kill them. Now this is what the Lord says to the family of Israel. Come back to me and live. Don't worship at the pagan altars. Don't go to the shrines. For the people of these evil places will be dragged off into exile. And the people that are worshiping idols will be reduced to nothing. Come back to the Lord and live. Otherwise. Otherwise. That's an important word. Otherwise, he will roar through Israel like a fire or the USA, devouring you completely. Your, glo your gods won't be able to quench the flames. You twist justice, making it a bitter pill for the oppressed. You think our courts are doing justice nowadays? Well, I wonder why. Evil. You twist justice, making it a bitter pill for the oppressed. You treat the righteous like dirt. It is the Lord who created the stars, Pleiades, and Orion. He turns darkness into morning and the day into night. He draws up water from the oceans and he pours it down as rain on the land. The Lord is his name. With blinding speed and power, he destroys the strong, crushing all their defenses. How you hate honest judges. Talking about the world. The world hates honest judges. But we got it very many anymore. How you despise people who tell the truth. I've been in some of them courts. You trample the poor, stealing their grain through taxes, unfair rent. Therefore thou 
you build beautiful stone houses, you'll never live in them. Though you plant lush vineyards, you'll never drink the wine from them. For I know the vast number of your sins and the depth of your rebellions. You oppress good people by taking bribes and deprive the poor of justice in the courts. So those who are smart keep their mouths shut, for it is an evil time. Do what is good and run from evil so that you may live. Then the Lord God of heaven's armies will be your helper, just as you have claimed. Hate evil and love what is good. Turn your courts into true halls of justice. Perhaps even yet the Lord God of heaven's armies will have mercy on the remnant of his people. Therefore this is what the Lord, the Lord God of heaven's armies says. There will be crying in all the public squares and mourning in every street. Call for the farmers to weep with you and summon professional warmers, mourners to wail. There be wailing in every vineyard and I'll destroy them all, says the Lord. What sorrow awaits you who say, if only the day of the Lord were here. The day of the Lord. You know what the day of the Lord is? The day of the Lord is a little more than seven years away. Because when the Lord snatches us out of here, there's going to be a little bit of time in there for this one world stuff to all come to place that you see the stage set all around you. I mean, the stage is set. They got everything in place. They're already doing mass murders all around this world. Persecuting Christians. I've got Christian missionaries in Ukraine. They're hiding. Crimea, hiding for their life. What sorrow awaits you who say, if only the day of the Lord were here. You know, the day of the Lord comes at the end of the seven years of tribulation when the Lord God Almighty, Jesus, and the saints, should be me and you, on mules. No, that's white horses. We'll be coming back to put an end to the evil that is destroying this world. And the Bible says that if he didn't come back then and, and stop it, it would destroy all, all creation, all, all of the earth. Just blow it up, eat it up, burn it up. That's what they're after. Because the devil doesn't want anything that brings glory to God. What sorrow awaits you who say, if only the day of the Lord were here. The day of the Lord is going to be one miserable day for the people left on this earth that have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to be one miserable day. All those judgments and stuff you've been studying in prophecy, Bible study in that. It's coming down the tubes in those seven years. You have no idea what you're wishing for. That day will bring darkness, not light. In that day, you'll be like a man who runs from a lion only to meet a bear. Escaping from the bear, he leans his hand against the wall in his house and he's bitten by a snake. That's a bad day. I don't care if you did have two cups of coffee. Starting, that'd be a bad day. Yes, the day of the Lord will be dark and hopeless without a ray of joy or hope. I hate all your show and pretense. This is the Lord speaking. I hate all your show and pretense, the hypocrisy of your religious festivals and solemn assemblies. assemblies. You mean keeping track of how they're trying to put this one world religion all together? Chrislam? Oh yeah, we're, we're just merging Christianity and Islam and Hindu and all of them all together into one and, and we'll all be so happy. I hate your show and pretense, the hypocrisy of your religious festivals and solemn assemblies. I'll not accept your burnt offerings and your grain offerings. I won't even notice all your choice peace offerings. Away with your noisy hymns of praise. I'll not listen to the music of your harps. Instead, I want to see a mighty flood of justice, an endless river of righteous living. That's what God wants to see. What's righteous living? Prayed up, fessed up, well fed. That's instructions to us today. Righteous living. Prayed up, fessed up, 
Well said. Can we do that? Yeah. Can we right all the wrongs that's in the world? No. Can we get rid of the unjust judges? No. Can we stop all the corruption, bribes and stuff? Individually, not one of us can do that. But what can we do? We can live prayed up, fessed up, well fed. You know, we can do that. It's our own individual effort. We can do that. Was it to me you were bringing sacrifices and offerings during the 40 years in the wilderness, Israel? No, you served your, you served your pagan gods and the images you made for yourselves. So I will send you into exile to a land east of Damascus, says the Lord. Amos chapter 6. What sorrow awaits you who lounge in luxury in Jerusalem and you who feel secure in Samaria in the world feel secure I've got good 401k I've got good I've got I've got it good right got it good got money in the bank oh the bank's closed um and the pension's broke oh and the electricity's off oh and there's no water. Total won't flush. <laughs> Try it again, Mom. What sorrow awaits you who lounge in luxury in Jerusalem and you who feel secure in Samaria? You're famous and popular in Israel. People go to you for help. But go over this around the world and, and uh, go over to Bamut, Bakhmut in Ukraine and see what's happened. I don't know what. 20, 30,000 people population there and they've about leveled the whole town along with several here some that's destruction that's destruction go over there and see what happened there then go to another great city down there and see what happened to the city of the Philistines and Gath and go see Sodom and Gomorrah oh you can't find them you are no better than they were and look at how they were destroyed you push away every thought of coming disaster, but your actions only bring the day of judgment closer. How terrible for you who sprawl on ivory beds, lounge on your couches. It must be expensive beds, I don't know. Eating the meat of tender lambs from the flock and choice calves fattened in the stall. You sing trivial songs to the sound of the heart. I wonder if we know more good country and western songs than we do gospel songs. Trivial songs to the sound of the heart and fancy yourselves to be great musicians. Like you drink wine by the bowl full and perfume yourselves with fragrant lotions. You don't care nothing about the ruin of your nation. Therefore, you will be the first to be led away as captives suddenly. All your parties will end. The sovereign Lord is sworn by his name. And this is what the Lord God of heaven's army says. I despise the arrogance of Israel, USA. And I hate their fortresses. I will give this city and everything in it to their enemies. If there's ten men left in one house, they'll all die. And when a relative who's responsible to dispose of the dead goes into the house to carry out the bodies, he will ask the last survivor, is there anyone with you? And when the person begins to swear no, he will interrupt and say, stop, don't even mention the name of the Lord. When the Lord gives the command, homes both great and small will be smashed to pieces. Can horses gallop over boulders? Can an ox be used to plow them? That's how foolish you are when you turn justice into poison and the sweet fruit of righteousness into bitterness. And you brag about your conquest. You boast. Didn't we take World War II? Didn't we win World War I? Oh, people of Israel. Israel's living in their own strength and their own power with ignoring God, ignoring God. O oh, people of Israel, I'm about to bring an enemy nation against you. The Lord God of heaven's army is able to oppress you 
throughout your land. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Do you think Amos warning, the prophet Amos warning, applies to us today? Do you think it does? Yes, sir. As a nation? To us individually? What can we do? Prayed up, fast up, well fed individually. That's what we can do. Psalms 34, 8. Taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Revelation 22, 17 says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. Let him that hears say, Come. And let him that's a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of that water, that water of salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ freely. Romans 8, 1 says, Therefore there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Amen. And Jesus says, I, in John 8, 12, says, I'm the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. What is that good news of Jesus Christ? What must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I shall be saved. What happens when I mess up? I fess up, because we have an advocate with the Father. 1 John 2 Little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not. It's best that you don't. It's like Amos said. But we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the covering for our sins and the payment for our sins. Not only ours, but for the sins of the whole world. Jesus died for our sins so that the worms of the world won't eat us up. Worms. Prayed up, fessed up, well fed. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for the blessings this day. I thank you for each one that's here, Father. And Lord, we just ask that you touch each heart to be one here that's not received your Son as their Savior, Father. I pray that you move their heart and say, Yes, Lord, remember me, forgive me. And for each one of us, Father, let's ask God. Father, put a hunger in our hearts for your word and give us hearts that want to follow in the path you put before us, Father. We just ask for your blessing, Father. We just ask that if there's any way possible you bring a revival to our country, Father. Restore our Christian foundations in this nation, Father. But Lord, we just thank you for your grace and your mercy. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Church says. Amen. Cowboy Church says. Yeah. Uh -huh. And Joe says. Thank you.